Welcome to Dear Romance Writer, where three writers who always deliver happily ever afters offer questionable advice for all of your relationship, work, and life problems. I'm Roan Parrish. I'm Zio Axelrod. And I'm Avery Flynn, and we have a great show for you guys here today, and we are lucky enough to have the amazing Riley Hart with us. Yay! Yay. Uh, Riley, tell us all a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, what book everybody should be diving in with. Um, well, I'm Riley Hart. Um, I also write under, or I have in the past, Night Ray Dawn. I do um, adult gay romance. Um, it's all in and at this point, but I would like to diversify that in the future. Um, I think I'm known probably mostly for character-driven stories. Um, that That's kind of what I want my brand to be, I guess, um, rather than, you know, a feel from a book. Um, I kind of write all over the place when it comes to, I can do something, you know, super angsty and then light and fluffy the next. I kind of just follow my muse and have fun. <laughs> I love your muse. I just finished Boyfriend Goals, by the way. Oh, thank you. So freaking good. <laughs> I had a lot so of fun good. that one. Yeah. All right, and since she didn't hold up a book, I will hold this one up. <laughs> Beautiful I have no paper so, copies of your books. I just realized that I have, everything is either audio or digital, so I'll have to fix that. It, well, I get the cat and it's a velvet mat, so you mm, have an I excuse to rub cover. it. That's my favorite. Yeah, that's your excuse to rub it. <laughs> that's your excuse to rub it. It's a velvet mat. So I have to grab some stuff for you at a polycon because we're all going to be there together. I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> I am looking forward to that. And yeah. a little scared. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm more scared about book bonanza than I am. About I was like, why scared? <laughs> just people. Yeah. Yeah. people. This is my first people. <laughs> you know? yeah. It was weird. No, I did just do, I did rare and that's my first signing. And since before the pandemic, so yeah. it was, I get it. It was just a little different, you know, kind of getting used to doing that again. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Plus that one was really travel. interesting. I saw you were there. Mm -hmm. but I was there too but it was no I didn't yeah it was two days it was two rooms so you were really spread out which was mm -hmm. lovely because like you didn't have the readers who looked like they were about to pass out from being squashed together or sick of being elbowed or anything like that so spacing yeah. reason it was great gossiping amongst authors not so great but. <laughs> yeah no I didn't really see anybody besides the people um, I did walk through my room and then the other room on the day that I was there, but not everybody was even had shown up yeah. by that point. So. Yeah, it was interesting. It was it was definitely interesting. The food was good, though. <laughs> Scott was awesome. I can't wait to go back one day. Very cool. I think I was the only person in my group that liked haggis. I was like, you guys, it's so good. It was good. No, yeah, I, didn't right? try, I didn't try it. <laughs> I liked People haggis. were trying to get us to try it. Our um, uber driver at one point we're like eh, i don't know <laughs> we had it in like the little like almost like sausage slices yeah little patties yeah yeah we had the patties but we also had it where they were balls and mm -hmm. they were breaded mm -hmm. and it came with like a brown gravy and that was delicious as well yeah but i also like blood pudding so, yeah, me too. Well, yeah, and I'm a picky eater. I don't eat a lot. Like my husband said, he would have tasted it. We just didn't get around to it. But I'm a picky eater, so. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to our questionable advice giving. On that note, now I'm hungry. Um, yeah. our, <laughs> our letter uh, is a good one. Thanks, everyone, for picking this one out um, for this episode. I think it's from Dear Bear or Ask Bear, but it says. The title is, How do I deal with my friend doing something I think is immoral? So it sounds like it's going to be a big one. Dear Bear, when we first met, my close friend, we'll call her Enid for privacy, had recently been cheated on and dumped by her boyfriend of four years. She was going through a lot of heartbreak and self-esteem issues at the time, so she was kind of sleeping around. A few months later, she was diagnosed, diagnosed with genital herpes. My heart broke for her when she told me, and I was as supportive as I could be. I remember telling her that when she got the news, her doctor told her she had to disclose this to every partner before having sex with them. I vividly remember the first time after her diagnosis that she hooked up with another guy. She had texted me saying that she was going to his house to hang out. I'd said something like, quote, oh, so if you guys end up having sex, you're going to have to have the conversation, end quote. And she said, quote, I'm not going to have sex with him, end quote. A few hours later, she texted me saying, that was the worst sex I've ever had. 
I asked, how did the conversation go? She never texted me back. Ever since then, I've been painfully aware of her sleeping with many other guys without disclosing to them. I've tried talking to her about it multiple times over the years, but she doesn't seem to take it seriously. I think her way of coping with herpes is pretending she doesn't have it. It's always bothered me, but lately it's been eating me alive. She just got into a serious relationship for the first time since her ex of four years. His name is Redacted. I don't know him super well, but I've met him a few times and he seems like a really nice guy with a good head on his shoulders. She's been sleeping with him without any form of protection for the last three months and he has no idea he could easily get a lifelong infection from her. A few weeks ago, they somehow got on the topic of STDs. He mentioned that a friend of his has herpes and that he literally told her that if she had herpes and didn't tell him, he would dump her as soon as he found out. She was upset when telling me about this and acted like she knew she had to tell him and was going to figure out the best way in time to do so. I told her that sooner is better than later and that she should not have sex with him again until she tells him because he would be even more upset if she continued having sex with him after that conversation. She agreed and said she would. A week went by and I hadn't heard anything. I also knew she had spent the night at his house at least once during that week. I reached out to her again with a long text message listing all the consequences of not telling him. She said she had thought of all of that and that she would tell him as soon as she was ready. Another week went by and she texted me saying something about having sex with him in her car. I was super upset and could not believe she was telling me that after everything I expressed to her. I can't do this anymore. I feel like I'm an accessory to a crime. What is my obligation in this situation? I feel awful standing by silently while he is in danger of contracting an incurable virus. I also do not want to lose this friendship. Please don't tell me to end my friendship. If I tell him myself, my friendship will end. If I threaten to tell him myself, my friendship will end. So what should I do? <laughs> First of all, that's a lot of information about your friend's sex life. Yeah. Like details, hours, like what time you started, what time you finished. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, two quick things before we get into the discussion on what this person should do considering they've already like outlined basically nothing is their only option if they can't tell the guy and they can't tell their friend to stop that anymore um and they don't want to give up the friendship you know yeah there's nothing they can do yeah yeah Yeah. you've locked yourself into a corner so yeah um but i would also like to say um i looked this up while we were going because i think something that that surprises people Mm -hmm. is that how common genital herpes is mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i went just to through so here's our educational portion uh, uh of the show uh this is from the cdc so i would consider this a well reliable Their stock is plummeted. A relatively <laughs> post-covid cdc but um a a relatively solid um yeah. source so uh the cdc estimates there are about 572,000 new genital herpes infections in the United States in a single year. So wow. half a million, almost 600,000 people every year. Uh, nationwide, basically 12% of people 14 to 49 have genital herpes. Uh, another thing to know about genital herpes is that it is, um, see, it's amazing. It was a long letter. I was able to read a lot of stuff um, <laughs> while listening. Uh, but you know, you can have it and not have any symptoms. You can have it and have occasional symptoms. You can have it and have symptoms all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a lot of that also, um, it used to be, and honestly, I didn't get a chance to look this one up, but it used to be that when you went in for your STI testings, that they didn't test for herpes because it, at least it used to be that you could only test for herpes when you were in the middle of an outbreak Hmm. that may be different now sorry it's been a long time since i've had to get an sti test (laughs) i'm old and i've been married forever um but yeah so things to consider um on that so the first thing i would say is if you're out here and you're listening to this and you have general herpes number one you're not alone number two uh if you are sexually active you know, this is one more reason why it's important to get tested and also important to stay safe. Um, but it's also, it's not a, it's not the end of the world if you get genital herpes. Okay. I'm off my educational, um, you know, milk stand, whatever you call it. But milk yes. stand? Yeah, <laughs> so I haven't heard that one. <laughs> heard that one. I'm off the milk stand. I liked it. I liked it. I like it. All right. Let's offer advice for this person who, who, <laughs> no advice 
<laughs> I knew someone once who was in the situation of the boyfriend where she was dating a guy and he didn't disclose and she got it and was devastated because she was and they had a kid together and she was devastated and broke off the relationship eventually but it was like I remember her coming in we worked together I remember her coming into work in tears and I didn't really know her that well at the time but she was we were both the only two people in the office I was like what's going on and she just like (laughs) spilled everything I was like oh my god I had to console her and stuff and I was just like I don't even know what to say like I don't know that it's such a a heartbreaking situation to be in when you know she loves and loved and trusted this guy thought they were going to be together forever and then for him not to disclose such a huge thing you know something that's affecting her health and her life and their kid and everything it was just she was absolutely devastated so my you know my heart goes out to the boyfriend in this situation Mm -hmm. more than any of them (laughs) but yeah I don't know what to tell this person like you like Avery said they've kind of backed themselves into a corner here because this has been going on for so long like even her friends Ollie doesn't obviously doesn't care about her opinion on this situation because she's not listening to anything that or she, she knows it doesn't matter because mm-hmm. the friends just whatever the friend says she's just going to be like okay i'm going to wait five minutes and then i'm going to do the same thing again and there's well there's no consequences there are yeah no, there are no consequences so um you know and while the letter deals with you know general herpes and stis i mean there's a million and a half things what do you do if you know one of your friends is cheating on yeah. their the other their partner who thinks they're monogamous right yeah not yeah. an open relationship not any of that stuff but literally you know do you have a moral obligation to say something does it matter if you know the person and you know if we're talking stis you know if you've got something that can be fixed with a shot do you or medicine i should say you know is that something you need to disclose or because it's you know a case of going and getting some medicine okay, you can, you can sneak that one by and be utterly surprised when the person comes to you. Right. You know, so there's, there's a lot of things that I think fall under this category of uncomfortable things to talk to people about, especially in the beginning parts of a relationship that you probably really need to tell. And that whole border of when you're friends with someone who is doing something that you know, that shouldn't be doing, Mm -hmm. what do you do? Right. Mm -hmm. And where does it cross line from, hey, yeah, he's stealing all the toilet paper from the office bathroom versus, yeah, his wife of six months who's, you know, four months pregnant with their kid, you know, he's, you know, fucking the secretary. So, you know, where is that line of interfering and not interfering? I'm also assuming that the letter writer isn't friends with the boyfriend because she doesn't, they don't talk about him like, oh. I know him too, or anything. It seems sort of like a casual acquaintance. So, yeah, I I think that the line for me of where keeping a secret turns to like, uh, you know, falls over that cliff of like now you're actually withholding evidence or uh, information that someone needs to know is like if you know someone's cheating but having safe sex or whatever, and it's not like you know that's an interpersonal thing Mm -hmm. that if the person being cheated on was my friend I would have a hard time being like oh they're both my both my friends what do I do but that's like you know that is an interpersonal issue that I think it depends on the person but to me when it's about disclosing medical information you are like non-disclosure of facts that would affect whether someone or not gives consent to have sex with you is non-consensual sex so Mm -hmm. if you are not telling someone hey, one of the things that could happen to you by having sex with me is X, right? About their health. Like you are manipulating and coercing someone to have sex with you or give their consent without all the information. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is a clear cut. Not only is it ethically wrong, it's legally wrong. And back when when there was like a lot of, uh, I don't remember how long ago this was, but like people were not disclosing that they had HIV mm-hmm. and knowingly That's having unprotected sex with people. And it was illegal. I mean, there were lawsuits brought, like it was considered public endangerment. So I think that, you know, the letter writer, like in my eyes did the right thing, which is first go to her friend and be like, Hey, you're doing something fucked up. 
you have to stop. The friend, like Avery said, has like clearly doesn't care about this person's opinion, Mm -hmm. clearly selfishly cares only about getting her own desires met and not at all about taking care of some of anyone, but also of like a partner that she purports to be in a relationship with. Like this is reckless behavior. It doesn't matter whether or not genital herpes has like terrible effects or more mild effects. Things are different for everyone and giving, potentially giving someone a disease without them knowing that that's one of the risks is non-consensual sex it's fucked up and I think she should tell her friend if you don't tell your partner within the next x amount of time I'm going to tell him or I'm gonna need to get like a lawyer involved which obviously she won't actually do because the boyfriend it'll then be on his shoulders but like it's fucking illegal dude and I mean I don't care about the law per se but like the fact that there is law made about this thing because it has been so much of a problem suggests that like it's a big fucking deal yeah. all right so just a quick point of fact again <laughs> i went back to the cdc um and they actually have a section on there that is called hiv and std criminal laws mm-hmm. and it says as of 2021 35 states have laws that criminalize hiv exposure um so it is specific to hiv uh possibly other STIs, everything else. So um, consult your own state uh, and local government laws. (laughs) But yeah. (laughs) Um, I actually agree a lot with that. Um, For me, it's the health issue. And Mm -hmm. like you said, it doesn't matter that it's a small thing. They have a right to know and they should be able to make that decision for themselves. And if you're taking that away from them, that's not okay. Um, as the friend, I kind of don't know what I would do. I think that I would probably even question in some ways my friendship, because if Mm -hmm. someone doesn't care enough about other people's, um, health, then, you know, what are they going to do to me (laughs) or, Mm -hmm. you know, or how can they betray me in some other way? So that's my thing. You know, like you said, the cheating thing, I mean, that's horrible, but it's a little different. Um, but when you are potentially giving someone something, even if it's mild, um, that can affect their life or, you know, who they're with in the future or, you know, there's a lot. So I think that's not okay. <laughs> I mean, if you swap out general, for, general herpes for COVID, for, you know, sorry, right. we're going to get censored for, <laughs> saying that for the, for the C, you know, for the C19, um, swap that out and then what? Okay. Because that affects everyone differently as well. Right. So if you have an active case of C-19 and you're engaging in, you know, exchange of fluids with someone, <laughs> potentially, you know, exposing them to that, you don't know what the reaction is going to be. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think this person is is very concerned about losing this per- this person, as a, using her as a friend. Yeah. And I'm right there with you, Riley. I don't know how much of a friend this person can possibly be when they're this callous about someone else's health yeah. and this callous about their friendship where you have a friend who's saying to you, I think you're doing something wrong. You really need to write this. And you're saying, yeah, 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 I'll do it over and over and over again, over weeks or months, however long this has been going on. That tells you she doesn't care about the boyfriend and she doesn't particularly care about you either. Yeah. I don't know how much of a, of a friendship this could possibly be. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I think that there's also something about like, I want my friends, it's not that I want to control the way my friends behave, but I want to know how they behave because I will make a choice about whether or not I want to be friends with someone based on their behavior. You know, like, honestly, it doesn't matter how close a friend someone is, if they're acting in a way that I find morally reprehensible, there's no way we could continue being friends because like, what are we going to do then? Like have conversations where we just know you can't talk about these Mm -hmm. topics. Like, Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing if it's an aunt who you see every other Christmas, you can you can kind of be like, okay, we're going to not engage in these topics for this period of time. But I'm like, I, I don't know. And this is me personally, like, I don't really know how I could trust that person's judgment about anything if they've shown to have judgment that is that values such different things than I value in this scenario. And I think the COVID situation is great. Like, there have been people in my life whose COVID protocol have shocked me, like shocked me. And, and I it has been really hard actually to ask people like, Hey, 
what's your thinking behind this? You know, like, I'm not going to go up to people and be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, Cause you know, defensiveness, but um, yeah, like I have asked people like, what's your thinking behind this? Like, why is this something that, that you think is okay? When I know for a fact that you think other things are not okay. Mm-hmm. And most of the time people's answers are like, I just feel like I don't know how risky anything is. So I can't make any choices. And I think mm-hmm. that's like a really common way to feel when there are so many so much information, so many disagreements, so many people saying different things is it's really easy to feel super overwhelmed. And I know when I feel really overwhelmed, I'm like, I don't know what choice to make. I just want to make like no choice. Yeah. But the thing is that like, this isn't making no choice, you know, like choosing not to deal with it, choosing to be like, I don't know. So I'm just gonna like obviate responsibility. Like it is a deep privilege and a deep, um, belief that you are almighty and all powerful to take other people's lives into your hands and to take other people's lives into your hands when you've just kind of made a default decision because you feel overwhelmed you know like just because I panic at the grocery store and buy sheet cake instead of any groceries doesn't mean that like if I had kids my whole family would have to eat nothing but sheet cake for a week because of that one moment of indecision you know like yeah. get it together if that happens yeah. please invite me over well if that happens like no one else is getting any of the sheet cake I right? don't have kids so it's all mine yeah well, we, we were actually having that exact discussion minus the sheet cake at my house the other day, uh, reading the news about the um, Uvalde shooting, right? And mm-hmm. the fact that no decision is a decision, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, you know, that applies to here too. It's like, well, you know, um, I'm just going to roll the dice, right? And, and I know it's wrong. We have, as human beings, an amazing ability to rationalize anything, Mm -hmm. right? That that we can do that. Somebody could rationalize a million things. Going over to their great grandma's birthday party when they have active C-19 Mm -hmm. because they may not pass along. They'll keep their space. And you know what? Grandma's not going to be here around forever anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Or you know what? I have genital herpes, but... Um, as a woman, I'm far more likely to contract than to give. So if I'm having sex with a guy or somebody with a penis, then it is not as big of a deal because I probably, right. Mm -hmm. Or we were caught up in the moment or, you know, a million things. We have this ability to do that. And it's really, really, really hard to Mm -hmm. step back and say, okay, (laughs) am I rationalizing? Am I just giving myself excuses or am I really this evil of a human being, right? Because a lot mm-hmm. of times I do think it comes down to our, our wants versus our inability to see that what we are doing is a bad thing because we don't want to be a bad person, right? Mm-hmm. So I think you do have to wait, you know, that when you're, when you're having these discussions. Sorry, I just went completely off topic, but you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Um, My other thing, though, to get back to the letter is I question how much this letter writer actually is a friendship and how much this letter writer has codependency situation going on Mm. with their quote unquote friend. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is why, you know, there's all of this specific sharing of things that I'm doing that are wrong and you shouldn't be doing this, but I'm never going to break off our friendship or say anything to your boyfriend because I can't break off our friendship. So yeah. that's a little worrisome as well. The mm-hmm. level of detail, I mean, people can share whatever they want to share, but the level of detail that this letter writer has about their friend's sex life, like down to like, oh, we just had sex in my car. Like it's, it's very, I almost wonder if her friend is getting a little bit of a thrill Mm-hmm. out of this I wondered that too especially um, knowing that she's face. uncomfortable with it knowing like, that she's uncomfortable you know and then you continue to tell her mm, and yeah, that she's opposed like vehemently <laughs> opposed to it right and you then, would think um, he would stop saying something right at the very right. least right um so like being a little bit illicit and then also on the other end having the boyfriend and not telling him so she's getting it on both ends because mm-hmm. I was thinking oh that sounds really dirty but I was thinking um that maybe it could be a fear of losing him because she was in that bad relationship and now she's found someone that she can be with. So it could be a fear of losing him if she tells him she, she knows he's going to bail, especially after that conversation that they had. Yeah. But I don't think that's what it is. I really don't. Just based on what the information we have here, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like a power trip. 
Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And the, that's the, the thing about telling, like, I, if, if, if you tell people, uh, your friends about your sex life, that's totally fine. I, I don't yeah. care at all. Yeah. But, um, I do think that like, if it's one-sided, like that's not just all your, you guys all share those details or like your friend group just shares those details. If it's right. just like the friend telling the letter writer, but not the other way around, then it's like, I think, uh, it's performance. It's like, wait, what's the, it, exhibitionism yeah it's like the mm-hmm. opposite of voyeurism like there's something ex- exhibitionist about being like oh I just fucked someone in my car oh I just hooked up with this person like nothing wrong with it but I do think like the performativity of that like maybe that's kind of a kink for her and if risky sex is also a kink for her maybe she fucking gets off on like I can have whoever I want and she doesn't want to disclose the thing that undercuts that um mm-hmm. And I think that that is what I'm getting away with kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be it. But I will also say that there are people that are just open book oversharers, right? It's not an exhibition thing. It's not, yeah, you know, all the rest of that. Some people are like that, just like some people are like, oh my God, I would never tell somebody if I had sex with somebody else, even my bestest, bestest, bestest friend. Right. So, yeah. And I think on the flip side, even there's people that it might not be like, a kink or exhibitionist or whatever but it's like their way to feel good or bring themselves up because yeah. I mean I know people in my life like that that it's um their self-esteem and self-worth is so low that it's like anything to make like someone I want to yeah exactly so yeah yeah it is it is interesting though but basically this person I mean if you're in this situation your choice is either to go along with it or to break the friendship. I mean, I don't really know. Yeah. Any, and, and if you're going to go along with it, you just kind of have to say, all right, yeah, you know what, this is what you're going to do. And, and my continued presence and my not saying anything is acceptance. So I'm going to shut up about it. And they know that. I think the letter writer knows exactly what their choices are. They just mm-hmm. are looking for. I want to do them. Yeah. yeah. A miracle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Also, that person is not a good friend. <laughs> no. No. He's not a good yeah, person. You generally. Know, and you know what? That's the thing to me. And and you know, we come across that a lot where it's the well, this person isn't like that to me, to somebody who's vile, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody who is willing to be vile to some people, but maybe not to others, is not that unusual, right? Um, so you've really got to listen when people are like, okay, this human being was horrible to me. And the fact that they weren't horrible to you doesn't mean they aren't vile. So, Mm. yeah. I mean, I think just the fact that her friend keeps telling her about sleeping with this guy, knowing how it makes them feel, that's Mm -hmm. not a good friend. Just Mm -hmm. not. Nope. they're vile to you too you just don't realize it yeah, <laughs> they're not, yeah. you're not realizing yeah. they're, they're vile to you in a way that you're willing to accept it yeah 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 Ugh. break yeah. up ah. <laughs> this is yeah. not a friendship this is not a friendship right. oh. um Please. what i would love is like a little palate cleanser but we're not gonna have one because we're not nice <laughs> um so <laughs> uh bring us around a little bit to our our fun chat here is you know what do you do you know taking the stakes a little bit away from this what would you do in a situation where you're in a relationship whether it's a um friendship sibling family you know romantic relationship with somebody else where you're in a situation where you have to admit something that you don't particularly want to admit um right and our first instinct is to you know protect uh you know what do you do in a situation like that and what advice would you give to somebody <laughs> um we have flummoxed <laughs> I, I don't know well, like it's a kind of hard too too. and even like you know um like relationship wise for me like I don't I've never really been in that situation I mean I've been with my husband since I was a teenager so I'm like I'm I mean the biggest thing for me is like I went and bought this and didn't tell you you know like it's probably <laughs> like you would care it's just like you know so I don't know I think that that's um I think I want to go second <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 
Well, okay. Well, since since you all have like very long term relationships, I'll break the ice on on it. I think that like actually, this is a huge thing that I've realized about myself in my current relationship is that I have changed my um like my attitude toward keeping secrets so much since relationships I had when I was younger and like honestly it all comes down to how sure of myself I am now versus how not sure of myself I was later like I remember relationships in you know high school and college when I was still figuring out who I was and like something that was a secret that I didn't want to admit was like oh I have a soft spot for this like super cheesy band and it doesn't fit with like what you think my taste is and if I admit it will I then like lose your respect or something you know and those kinds of things are like really inessential but the pattern of curating yourself for another person based not on even what they want but on your interpretation of what they want Mm -hmm. is is this thing that I think like almost everyone I know fell into when we were younger and it's like the it's like the wanting to be wanted wanting to be cool wanting to fit in wanting to whatever your version of that is even if your version of of like wanting to be cool is like being a super weirdo everyone has these like perfect selves that they want to live up to and so curating yourself to only show those things to someone is really normal but I think nowadays I don't have that at all in fact I'm like every every detail about me is what makes me me and so like filtering them out in fact deprives someone of connecting with me on something that they might connect with me on and I don't care if they think it's silly because I know that I like it and that it doesn't define me as a person and maybe it is silly right and so I think that like that is that is such a huge shift and it because this letter too I'm like I think Riley what you were saying about this um Enid like having low self-esteem and needing to buoy that with like other people's approval other people's thinking that she's hot or that they want to have sex with her or whatever I feel like that is the the thing right is like if you're confident in who you are you are as a person and if you're confident in your relationship then like those those secrets don't have the two that they're like they lose their toothiness Mm -hmm. power thank you (laughs) Yeah. So I feel like now I'm also just much better at communicating. And so it's, it's easier to tell like any, anything that would be a secret if something came up, I feel like it's much, much easier now for me to tell my girlfriend, like, Oh, I have this thing. I'm really embarrassed that I did, or I think I messed up. Oh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I messed up. I did something I shouldn't have done. I, I like texted someone and asked for information, but in doing so, like kind of told them a fact about my girlfriend but without asking her first Mm -hmm. and as soon as I did it I was like "Ooh, shouldn't have done that should have asked first um and so then I like when I went over to her house I was like I have to tell her there's no reason she would ever know like it, it I could easily keep this a secret but that's not the point the point is like connection and so I told her, I was like, hey, I, I think I kind of messed up and told someone something that maybe you wouldn't want them to know. I, I didn't think about it, but the second I did it, I realized I fucked up. Here's what it was. I'm really sorry. And I won't do it again. And like, that was the end of it. That is something that in previous relationships, I would have guarded the secret. I would have texted the person and been like, oh my God, I shouldn't have told you that. So don't ever tell her that I told you. Mm -hmm. And that's like bringing someone else into this mess that I created. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. But like, I think that the, at base level for me, it's just like being comfortable with myself and being comfortable in a relationship. If you have those two things, it's like almost anything can be disclosed or confessed to, or like, it doesn't even have to be a secret or a confession and saying it right away. like leeches it of that power as well yeah I can see that and I can even now that you I didn't think about it from the start but now that you said that I can see that big time in myself and it's something that I probably still struggle with in some ways but um that I've gotten way 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 better is you know curating myself for different people or things that you know being embarrassed and not telling something or things that I'm willing to let people see um I did that a lot a lot a lot a lot when I was younger and I can even look at like my relationship with my husband and say that you know I probably did that a lot in the beginning too because it was just and even not I think it came from me like not 
I've always felt secure in that relationship and who he is and all of these things, but like I wasn't in myself and it was, I didn't want to say anything that would make someone look at me weird or different or feel, you know, um, so I've probably kept things a lot more that I shouldn't have um, when I was younger, but hopefully, I mean, I don't really do it that much anymore, but I'm sure I probably do. <laughs> that curation is so deeply ingrained in me yeah. that I don't think I can ever shake it. It was something that hard. I was raised to do, like specifically do this part of my family's fabric is mm-hmm. to curate yourself for different situations. And we were told that like, you're going to be in different settings and you have to you basically you're raised to be a chameleon yeah and -hmm. so that's really it's been I mean I haven't even tried to get rid of it honestly because it's it's come it's you know it's worked to my advantage in some some cases but it is definitely part of my the fabric of my being so I can't even like speak to that in terms of like oh I shook it off it no it's hard I guess (laughs) it's not something that's gonna (laughs) Um, but I will say in terms of like secrets, I was trying to think of a secret that I, that I, I mean, I keep a lot of secrets, but they're like, that's different. But like, this is like a secret that someone w- might want to know was when I wrote my first book. I didn't tell anyone in my family that I had written a book. Aww. And um, because I knew what the reaction would be from different people and different kinds of reactions. And so I was like, I'll just do this and this will just be for me until it got a little bit of national attention and I was like oh crap now I gotta say something <laughs> so you know but it was like but I was like 12 years old all over again like I did this thing in here you know like that kind of thing no um, I I actually did that <laughs> with a lot like yeah not yeah. a lot of people did not know that I was <laughs> writing at first a lot of people <laughs> yeah yeah I was like you're doing what what and I was like, yeah yeah and people are, you know I mean and again I don't care as much like anymore I've grown out of that but I think that you know in the beginning it was so much you know putting yourself out there first okay my insecurities are huge and then it's also you know people are weird about romance if you're not a romance reader Mm -hmm. and back you know um that was something I struggled with more I think in the beginning is being like oh I don't want them to know what I do that I you know um but now I'm just like whatever (laughs) Okay, well that that brings us around to the whole writing. Um, wait, wait, Amy, what about you? Oh, I'm skipping. <laughs> I know, <this>. right? Okay, <laughs> so yeah, sorry. <laughs> there you go. There's your answer. Uh, every non-answer is also an answer. So um, you know, when it comes to your writing, um, you know, how do you handle the situation in some of your romance books? Have you ever included, you know? the big secret that's not oh my god I love him I can't tell him you know what have you guys done do you have any examples from your books the deep dark secret yeah I'm trying to think one of your love interests kill the other one's mom (laughs) by accident oh my gosh okay (laughs) 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 not that exactly um, but I was sitting there thinking, I know I have to have done this, but I've written so many books. And I'm like, I can't remember. But when you said that, yes. Um, and it's actually one of my favorite books that I have written. And she sought him out because her father had um, been drinking and driving and hit and killed someone in his oh, family. Right. And then yeah. she... <laughs> felt you know um she felt bad and she you know sought him out and then of course he did not know and that did not go well but then it did yeah that was good. that was good I remember. what book yeah. is that because like, it's been uh, a facade it was an IRA book yeah <laughs> I love Adrian <laughs> all right you guys big secrets in books I really like one I, one of my favorite character traits is like the person who thinks that something about them is a deep dark secret and they confess it and then it turns out that their partner had obviously known it the entire time and loved them in spite of it or because of it or whatever and I feel like that is that has been my most consistent through line of secrecy I don't think I have very many deep dark secrets a couple but I'm not going to spoil them um but yeah like the 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 feeling of like, oh my God, I can't tell you that I have like my, my deepest vulnerability is that I have like trust issues or something. And then, you know, finally the person's like, I just don't believe, I just like can't trust anyone. Da, 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 da. And I didn't want to tell you. And then the love interest is like, um, <laughs> duh, I have met you. Obviously this is true. And obviously I fell in love with you anyway. And then they're like, oh, 
Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm not unlovable. Great. Next chapter. <laughs> I like that. And one of the books I'm working on now, there's a, I can't say what oh, it is, but there's a. We just lost Riley. No, come back, Riley. All right. Keep yeah. telling us. And then hopefully Riley will come back before the end. We're so close. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, my, one of my protagonists has a huge secret that not only is she keeping from her well she's got two secrets one she's keeping from her family and one she's keeping from her found family so her found family doesn't know the truth about her past and her family doesn't know the truth about her present mm. and in the book the two Ooh, things fun yeah kind of collide or, which yeah. one is that that's the girl with rhythm in her heart oh well yeah okay i'm like wait a minute why do i not know this already <laughs> yeah and and that would explain it that would explain yeah. it because some people don't give us early access to their books <laughs> so you know not that i'm bitter um so uh let's see uh i don't tend to do this i mean i write rom-coms so my secrets are gonna be like you know your dog comes to my house every thursday night and <laughs> i feed him table scraps right so um but i am on a um big Stephen King kick right now for some reason in my audiobooks which I've never really been a big Stephen King person mm -hmm. um but anyways the audiobooks are really good and so I'm enjoying them a lot but I just got done with Dr. Sleep and this is oh. a huge issue with so Dr. Sleep for those of you who don't know is like the um sort of what happened to the kid from The Shining answers that right um I like The Shining a million times better but that's just my personal preference but it was really interesting how um it was set up within the um within the book and it went all the way around and you see all the craft things you know when you're listening as an author mm -hmm. but he had the so the danny torrance character had this he did something he was deeply shamed by deeply deeply shamed and riley is back yeah all right, so um, hold on just one second. I'm going to rename Riley. Here we go. <laughs> I renamed her. <laughs> but so he has this thing. Hey, Riley. My power went out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. I have no idea why, but it's back. So if it happens, but now we get a different background. Happen. Yeah, so, I know. I, see, to my <laughs> I love that. You've got some beautiful artwork behind you. Oh, um, but so he has this thing that he did that he is deeply, deeply shamed of. He is in AA. There's a whole thing through line throughout. Talking about Doctor Sleep, by the way, by Doctor Sleep by Stephen King. <laughs> so because I write rom coms, so I don't have any, you know, <laughs> stuff in my book. But anyway, so he's in AA. And part of the thing is, you know, part of their their steps is admitting the horrible things that you did, right? He's been carrying this thing the whole book that he did that has extreme deep shame for him the whole time. It's like his big deep dark. And, um, and when he finally admits it, it's right, it's right at the end of the book at one of his A meetings and everybody's like, uh -huh. and they're like ready to go get cake or fill up in coffee or go outside and have a cigarette. Right. So it's that same thing, Ron, that you were talking about. And it was, it paid off mm. so beautifully because it is such a good, I think, universal theme that we do. We, we, as people will carry these things that we think are horrible and that we can't ever tell anybody and the truth of it is more than likely not every time <laughs> if you kill kittens on the weekends um yeah that's different but you know more than likely people are going to if they are your friends if they truly love you if they you know all of those things they're gonna see you beyond mm -hmm. whatever that deep dark is that you feel you've got it doesn't have to define you even though it feels like it does mm -hmm. Which is why I really feel like uh, Enid should just tell her boyfriend, just shine the light on the secret. If you actually change as a person, maybe he'll forgive you. If you're not ready to change as a person and you keep doing things that hurt people, you don't really probably, maybe you shouldn't These be in a relationship. People. Oh. I mean, if she doesn't tell him after that conversation he had specifically about this very thing and about how- Yeah, she's not going to, she doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, maybe here. I wonder how that came up. Like, did he just suspect something? Did he see like a prescription in the cabinet? Like, you, it, you know, like how did that specific thing come up during conversation? I wonder. And, yeah, because it was like, the yeah. friend, right? The friend who he got on the talk with a friend. I think the friend was set, talking somebody, about the conversation that they had. Like I her thought somebody told, told her else her. they know, knew had that situation. Or so, I don't remember. Yeah. Oh. You know what? Okay. I wanted to circle back to the letter real quick because I forgot something right before we say goodbye. Sorry. I'm going to stir <laughs> this pot again. Um, and that is um, number one, our letter writer is a judgy McJudgerson. And I kind of wonder like, and, and I'm saying this because of what she said, what the letter writer said in the Not beginning about how they had the bed breakup and then they slept around because of it. And blah, 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 blah. Sometimes people sleep around because they want to. So, yeah, you know. I agree. but mm-hmm. I will say there is definitely a tone to this, this letter that makes me feel that what the letter writer gets out of the friendship more than anything is the ability to enjoy all of this lovely drama and get to judge it yeah i can see that personally and and i get that vibe from that so who knows maybe enid and our unsigned letter writer are just meant for each other (laughs) so yeah it could be just a little toxic to some some people thrive on drama even if it's not their own Mm -hmm. and love to be able to be the person that says i told you so Yeah. yeah and i'm the only one who's there for you because nobody else would be there because of how you are so yeah yikes that was too familiar <laughs> yeah sorry toxicness but but it's true so anyway sorry i had to stir the pot before we say goodbye <laughs> that's my call i don't like this letter writer yeah okay no no yeah. i i can see it i can see run it. boyfriend run yeah 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 get away from both of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely uh well gosh riley you have really uh you've sailed tumultuous waters with us <laughs> and have come out the other side at shore hopefully unscathed um, no thank you guys for having me and usually i'm super nervous and you guys just made me feel at ease so <laughs> well, it was absolutely a joy to have you will you tell our listeners um where can they find you on the internet and remind them what your either most recent book is or that's coming out next um rileyheartwrites.com is my um is my website and all my other social media and all those links are there newsletter and all that good stuff um and my most recent um that was a release that wasn't a collab was um boyfriend goals which is just light and fun goodness like I've never had a book I don't think that made me as happy to write (laughs) as that one did um and it's um a man who inherits um a bookstore with an apartment above it on a little island off the east coast and um my dream yeah (laughs) right it's on my list it's on my my kindle (laughs) So yeah, um, that's, that's my, um, that was my happy place. <laughs> oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. Well, that is in my Kindle literally as we speak and I am bumping it up the list. Cause that sounds exactly, exactly like what I want. Um, well, thanks to everyone else for hanging out with us too. I would like to remind you that we have a giveaway Ooh, yeah. going on. Yeah, this is the last, yeah. this is the yeah, last I think... week for it, I think. Uh, oh no. <laughs> No, no, this is going to go live July 7th. Oh my God, you're okay. all we lied to you. We all right, you need to admit life. when you did something wrong, wrong. That's right. <laughs> Friends, I did something wrong. I said that we have a giveaway and it is over. But we should be able to announce the winner next next time. Oh, right, but we're going to announce the winner. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> These intros or outros. All right, <laughs> we had Riley. Yay, the giveaway is over. Wah. But we'll have a winner soon. Yay. Also, yeah. yay, is that we have started to get more letters from you lovely people, and we cannot wait to answer them live on the show. Uh, please, even though the giveaway is over, send us your letters, your questions, no question too big or too small. As you can see, we are happy to dig into every detail ad nauseum or make broad sweeping statements about the entire damn thing and everything in between. <laughs> so go to our website at dearromancewriter.com we have an anonymous form you can fill out there with your your problem or you can email or your us. friend's problem 
or your friends. <laughs> I love oh, that. Your friend. Quote unquote. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I started listening to this podcast that's about gossip and it's like every week it's some, the, the podcast host bringing a friend on and telling them a piece of gossip about people that none of them know. And it's fun because you don't have anything invested and you don't have to stress out for these people, but you like hear their story of gossip. It's amazing. Anyway, uh, don't remember why I started talking about that, but uh, you should, oh yeah, no problem, too big or small, your friends' problems, also great. Um, yeah, send them to us and we will answer them live on the show. We can't wait to give you a bunch of questionable advice from this trio of happily ever after enthusiasts. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye, y'all. Bye. Thank you so much for subscribing to Dear Romance Writer. Remember to keep sending in those letters at dearromancewriter.com. We can't wait to tell you what to do. Dear Romance Writer is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love, frolic.media slash podcasts.